You say hi? You say hi? Hey YouTube, what's going on? Uh, this is Aaron and welcome to my shop. After getting some uh, good natured harassment at the bash, I decided it is finally time to get my butt in gear and go ahead and start making some videos. And I figured what better way to kick off the channel than to ask for some help. Um, this is my shop and as you see, it is kind of crowded and not very well organized and I need some help with that. So previously, I just had the lathe and some other kind of support machines like the welders and the, the grinders and bandsaw and stuff like that. And now that I've added the milling machine, I need some uh, figuring out and something to do uh, about just organizing the space better, getting the, the lathe in the mill to where I can kind of use them both from the same spot, just so that I can have my tooling kind of close together and just, just in a better, you know, more useful arrangement. So. That's what I'm hoping I can get from you guys is some, some, some suggestions and just, you know, what I can do to make the most of my space. I don't have a tiny garage. I'm not complaining at all, but who wouldn't want more space? I can hear that, uh, heard at the bash that Tom Lipton is getting nervous because he feels like he doesn't have enough room. And obviously you guys, uh, I've seen his shop and it's huge. So everybody wants more space, but I want to do what I can with mine until we can eventually add on to this garage, which is, uh, Definitely a goal of mine. So anyway, here's what we're starting with. We've got the, uh, from right to left here, we've got the milling machine and then the, the black Kalamazoo bandsaw there and then the Powermatic um, combination sander. Then I've got my ZT Fab welding cart with the TIG and MIG machines on it. To the left of that is the, uh, that's a blue Baldur grinder that I'm actually selling because I, I really don't need it. I just finished uh, repainting it and getting the motor uh, all tuned up and new bearings and all that stuff. So that's for sale right now. Behind it is my huge welding table. And then in the background, you can see on the left there, there's my two big green Bidmore cabinets. And against that back wall, there are some more um, Lista cabinets. So high density tooling storage, and, and we'll go over there in just a minute. But really what I wanna figure out is where to position the lathe in the mill, and then everything else can kind of be configured to support those two machines, because those are the biggies get a look at uh, some of the rest of the shop. There's those three lists of cabinets that are holding up the workbench surface and the vise. Um, that's my kind of primary work surface to figure things out. I just got the granite plate right before the bash, so that's not uh, not leveled or really in position at all. And then the, the purple list that you see down there is mobile and has kind of my primary lathe tooling in it and uh, measuring tools and stuff like that. And then the big blue list down there is full of kind of occasional use stuff, um, my like big stare at uh, machinist square and power tools and just all kinds of bulk stuff that uh, those big deep drawers are awesome for. And then of course you see on the wall, I've got my ZT fab uh, organizers and grinders and air tools and stuff like that. Uh, and then far to the left here is my with soda, um, that has a, a wire wheel on the left side, of course, and then the right-hand side is my Scotch-Brite uh, EXL deburring wheel, which I use for uh, kind of polishing up and, and finishing things that need a little bit of help to, to look pretty. So anyway, this is all on the table to move literally everything in this shop except for two items. I've got to keep the freezer that we'll see in a minute where it is, and I've got to keep the air compressor where it is because that thing is just, it's not convenient to move. It's wired directly from panel all the way to the starter. So I don't want to mess with trying to put that in a different spot. And then my wife's freezer is, is in as good a spot as it can be. So we're going to leave those two things where they currently are. But everything else is on the table. If it makes sense, I'm totally willing to, to get rid of 
you know, a couple of these cabinets, if that if that's the right thing to do. Um, maybe selling this welding table and making a new one that's a little bit smaller, a little bit narrower. I, I made this welding table based on the piece of plate that I was able to buy. And uh, although it's a, a terrible uh, regret, I never should have bought that piece of material because it's so bad. But anyway, we'll get there. And uh, let me show you a couple of other views of the shop just so you get more of an idea of, of the space we're dealing with. All right, so from here, we're kind of looking back where I was just standing. Uh, the, the last clip was right in front of the uh, the blue air compressor. So that's what I'm saying, that thing, it's obviously it can be moved, but it's in a good spot. I, I kind of want to leave it there. It drains to the outside and obviously the power is there. So I think I'm pretty good with it. In the right hand corner is my uh, another Baldor grinder. And I think that one's probably, I haven't decided if it's going to stay or go because I just got this Burr King that I, I just tore down and I think most of what I use this Baldor for, I can do with the Birking. So I might part with that. And then we've got some scrap metal and um, other bins there. And then the, the two big uh, Vidmar cabinets, the green ones, are where all of my mechanics tools are. Um, and I do have a lot of machinist tools in there. I just haven't kind of consolidated and put things in a better organized manner, but I'll get there. That's like where all my taps are. And um, I've got some cutting tools in there. Um, I've got uh, a, yeah, some supplies like abrasives for, you know, scotch right hand pads and stuff like that. Um, so those are there. And then up on the top of the wall there, you see that is the most important piece of the shop equipment. And that is my air conditioner that keeps it uh, as cool as I can afford in the summertime. Uh, I've never had to turn on the heat because it doesn't really get cold here, but I can if I need to. And then over to the left, if we just pan a little bit here, we can see some more of the shop. Um, on the welding table in front of us here is the Burr King and my new uh, dividing head. Let me see if I can point. Yeah, so this is the dividing head and that's my new Enco rotary table. And then over here, all these gray parts, that's all Burr King parts. So that just got started. Um, but anyway, as you see down the wall there, this big pile of junk here, that stuff is all going away. Like that's all either for sale now or I just need to get someone to buy it all at, at once for super cheap. And underneath it is a stainless steel sink. So I need to get a plumber in here uh, to get rid of this thingy. As you see there is the uh, water softener that my wife and I haven't used. Um, it, it still works, I believe, but when we bought the house, we had no intention of using it. So it'll get pulled out and then the water lines will get reconfigured to accept my stainless steel sink so I can wash my hands inside the shop. And then next to it is the 30 ton uh, Carolina press. And then we've got some like yard tools and stuff like that over there as well. And the, the shop back. Um, and yeah, just some, just kind of some miscellaneous stuff. That area needs to be fairly close to the wall so that the car can, can back in. Cause that's one of my big constraints here is my lovely wife lets me do all this fun stuff in the garage. And her only request is that her car always park inside. Um, having the air conditioning in the garage makes a humongous quality of life difference when you go out in the morning and you can get in a nice comfortable car that's not 130 degrees carried over from the night, night before. Um, and so anyway, I'm, I'm totally on board with her wanting to keep her car inside and that's, that's the, the one big space taker, but it's always, you know, it's gone for um, a lot of the time. Whenever she goes somewhere or we go together as a family, then I've got um, open space here that I can you know, move big parts around in, or if I'm doing some fabrication that doesn't fit on the welding table or whatever, and uh, her car can be in the driveway for a little while and that's, that's no big deal. So anyway, I'll show you kind of one last shot of the rest of the space here, and then you can give me some suggestions. All right, so here's kind of the last shot of the, the shop that I wanted to show you. You can see there's a little, uh, little shop cat right here. She's the sweetest little thing ever and she looks a little sleepy now because she's a cat. But anyway, there's the, the, the uh, freezer that is gonna stay right there. I think that's a, a really good spot for it. I've got my four stronghold cabinets. So empty those way about uh, between 650 and 800 pounds each. So I, I'm not eager to move those at all. And of course they're self-contained and they're not hurting anything where they're at. Um, most of that stuff is just kind of household necessities. So there's a bunch of you know, cans of paint in there. There's my uh, aerosol cleaners and 
Uh, the, the one on the far right is full of parts. So that's like my parts bin that has wires in it and, you know, bulk wire in it and uh, nuts and bolts in the door hangers and stuff like that. And all the way down, it's just kind of the random stuff you have when you own a home and you don't want to store it inside the house. Our, our laundry room doesn't have great cabinets. So some of the stuff you might normally put in your laundry room is out here, like the, you know, the cat carrier up on top and the bug spray backpack thing. Um, and then I've just got like, you know, random pieces of wood from le left over from projects and whatever else. So that stuff is, I'm pretty sure I just want to keep all that stuff where it is. And then you see the stripes on the floor there that kind of helps my wife align her car in, in a, an ideal spot so that I don't have any trouble getting into those cabinets on the other side. And then on this side, kind of leaving the maximum amount of room possible for working in the shop and doing stuff. So anyway, that's where we're at. I just need to figure out what to do with the shop now. So here we are. Now it's time to figure out how to make all of these puzzle pieces work together in the best way possible. I don't want to be moving things all the time, of course, because moving a milling machine, even though I've got nice, good quality floors and I can make some stuff to help me along, it's still a huge pain in the butt, as is moving that lathe because the, the feet are so small on it. So anyway, we need to figure out the best way to organize this and, and kind of make it work for me as, as well as possible. I think uh, moving the welding table out of the way, scooting the lathe down, and then swinging the mill in between the lathe and that garage door is probably the best way to go, but I don't know. I want to hear some outside input. I'm in this shop pretty much every day, so I kind of get used to the way things are. And maybe you guys from um, all over the country and have different ideas and have a good solution for me. So I'm looking forward to getting my shop better organized. I work on it all the time, but you know how it is. And uh, anyway, thanks for your help and hopefully this place can get a, a little bit of a makeover.